Good evening, it's Tuesday, August 6th, and you're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it awaits at 7.23 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. My name is Kate Tice, and I'm a SpaceX certification engineer here at company headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Welcome to the webcast for the AMOS 17 mission, SpaceX's 10th launch of 2019. We'd like to extend a particularly warm welcome to Spacecom CEO David Pollack and the nearly 200 Spacecom guests who have traveled from across the globe to watch today's launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. On today's mission, we will be flying Spacecom's AMOS 17, a geostationary communication satellite which will provide internet, phone, and secure communications to customers in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. We're currently at T minus 12 and a half minutes until liftoff, and currently all systems are go. Let's take a look at that rocket there on the pad. So that's our 70 meter two stage liquid fueled rocket. The bottom two thirds that you see there is the first stage, which accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines. This will be the third and final flight for this booster, which previously flew on the SHL-2 mission last November and on Telstar 19V just over a year ago. We will not be recovering the first stage following today's mission. There on the screen, you can see quite a bit of white gas floating around, totally normal. That's just the liquid oxygen from inside the vehicle venting and, and, and turning into gas as it makes contact with the atmosphere. On top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber interstage, and on top of that is the F9 second stage. And that's what takes the payload to its eventual destination in orbit. The stages separate at about two and a half minutes into flight. The second stage has a single Merlin vacuum, or as you hear us refer to it, MVAC engine, and that ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will be carrying the AMOS-17 satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. The satellite is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you see right there, the pointy cone at the top of the rocket. This protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we'll jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves tonight with our recovery vessel, Ms. Tree, formerly known as Mr. Steven. Our hope is to catch one of the fairing halves in the ship's nets and then recover the other half from the water with our other recovery vessel, Go Navigator. Our catch attempt will occur around T plus 45 minutes into flight, which will be after our webcast concludes, so we'll be providing any additional updates um, on those catches via our social media accounts. Lastly, the large trust structure that you see there is the transporter erector, or TE. That's what we use to, hold the rock, to roll the rocket out to the pad from the hangar and then raise it to its vertical launch position, as, as you see there. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the, to the rocket and satellites until F9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. At liftoff, that's what we'll retract in order to clear the way for F9's ascent. Good afternoon. I'm John Innsbrucker, the Fal Falcon Principal Integration Engineer at SpaceX and we're just inside 10 minutes before launch. Good news is we're working no issues on Falcon 9, but we are closely watching the weather. Falcon 9 rolled out to the pad with the AMOS-17 satellite at T-minus 16 hours and went vertical about 12 hours ago. 
Now the chief engineer held a technical poll at T-minus one hour, and then the launch director held both the propellant load and the launch go, no-go poles at T-minus 38 minutes. Now the go, no-go poll covers the 10 people who are counting down the Falcon. They electronically click on go in their online procedure. Now for Falcon 9, we've been loading propellant since T-minus 35 minutes. Falcon 9 uses rocket-grade kerosene, which we call RP-1, for its fuel and liquid oxygen, or LOX, is the oxidizer. It's that cold LOX that's causing the condensation clouds that you see around the first and second stages. Now with fuel and oxidizer on hand, we do need an ignition source to complete the fire triangle. Now for Falcon 9, this is T-tub liquid, which is our igniter. You might see this at T minus zero as a green glow right before the engine's light and the rocket takes off. Now currently fuel is completely loaded on the second stage. Fuel is scheduled to finish up on the first stage at about T minus six minutes before launch. And meanwhile, liquid oxygen load is continuing on both first and second stages. Now in addition to the RP-1 fuel and the liquid oxygen, Falcon 9 also uses helium to keep the tanks pressurized in flight. This helps fill the empty volume created as we deplete propellant out of the stages. Helium load began before the webcast went live. We're topping off until about the last minute and a half before launch. Now engine chill will begin at T minus seven minutes. You're getting the team ready in a minute to open up the pre-valves between the first stage propellant tanks and the nine Merlin engines. This will allow a little bit of cold liquid oxygen to flow into the turbo pumps, bringing them down to a temperature close to that of the super chilled propellant that will soon be flowing through the engines at liftoff. So the Falcon 9 is looking good. On the satellite side, the Spacecom team transferred Amos 17 to internal power starting at T minus 30 minutes. They completed that at T minus 15 minutes. They're ready for launch. They're just monitoring telemetry on the spacecraft. The range tells us that they are green, air and sea space are cleared. And the big one is the weather. We had to delay half an hour this evening for launch. Currently the weather rules are all green, but we're watching everything as we go through the last seven minutes of the countdown. So right now, all systems continue to be go for liftoff at 23 minutes after the hour. As we mentioned earlier, tonight's mission is for Spacecom, a satellite operator headquartered in Israel. Today we're launching AMOS-17. AMOS stands for African Mediterranean Orbital Satellite, and the 17 is for 17 degrees east longitude location of the satellite. Built by Boeing, it'll be the most advanced high-throughput satellite providing communication services to Africa and have a life expectancy of over 20 years. Let's get some more details on our customer payload tonight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, We're just inside, five minutes from liftoff. Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. First and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with over one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Stage one actually finished loading just a moment ago. 
and we have also begun chilling of the nine Merlin engines. We're also getting ready now for the completion of liquid oxygen loading on both stage one. That'll happen at about T minus three minutes. Second stage will close out at about T minus two minutes. The view on the screen is Falcon 9, the strung back part of the transporter erector still around the vehicle. We're getting ready to open up the clamp arms that attach to the second stage. Once the arms are open, coming open right now, you can see them. We will then begin retracting the strong back. That'll be coming up in about 10 seconds. The strong back will recline about two degrees away from the Falcon 9. Beginning motion of the strong back. Now we're using hydraulic struts to pull it back and at liftoff, those hydraulic struts will pull it farther away as the rocket lifts off to clear the strong back. Another event coming up at T minus 60 seconds is the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. There are three flight computers on the second stage that constantly compare commands and calculations with each other. That way, if any one computer develops a fault, the other two can safely continue the flight. So Falcon 9's looking good. The Amos 17 payload, the Spacecom team, everything continues to be good for them. Currently, the range is tracking no issues. Everything is clear for launch. And the weather continues to cooperate, but we've still got a few minutes to go. So as we've passed just inside T minus three minutes, let's listen in to the countdown nets for the terminal count of Falcon 9 with Amos 17. LDCE, this is RC on countdown one. Be advised the range has got no go at this time. Continue with the count. We'll execute a range hold at T minus 30 seconds if the range does not clear the issue. Uh, no, I, it got stuck. Stage two locks close up. LDCE, this is RCN Countdown. Be advised, we're continuing with the count. The ranges go at this time. F9 is on startup. Stage 2, pressing for flight. LD is go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Vehicle is pitching downrange.
guy powering the flame train now, though. Vehicle is supersonic. Coming up on one minute into flight, we're getting ready for maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. You've heard the call out. We're through the region of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Vehicle going supersonic as we leave the denser parts of the lower Earth's atmosphere. Falcon 9 trajectory looks good. All nine Merlin engines are at power. Everything looking good for Falcon 9. We're heading due east from Cape Canaveral, headed to the first of two orbits planned for today. Nice view from the onboard camera, looking back at the plume slowly expanding as we leave the atmosphere. The plume will get larger as we get out to the vacuum of space. Now today, first aid shutdown is planned for about T plus 2 minutes, 45 seconds. We won't be recovering the first stage today, so that leaves more and propellant to burn to achieve the required orbit for the satellite. If you compare that to last week's CRS-18 resupply flight to the space station, on that mission the first stage shut down almost half a minute sooner than today. We needed to reserve enough propellant to be able to turn the first stage and return it all the way back to the launch site. Now coming up quickly in 20 seconds, a sequence of events, main engine cut off, the nine main engine shut down, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine coming up in just under 15 seconds. Miko. AVI stage separation confirmed. We've had successful ignition of the second stage engine. The Merlin Vacuum D engine is up at power. Turbine speed Page looks one, good. You can see the nozzle beginning to glow red, a tradition stage for two, the upper nominal stage. Trajectory. First stage has completed its mission. It's falling back to Earth. As we said, we won't recover it. Coming up next, fairing separation out in the vacuum of space. You guys, fairing separation confirmed. The position of signal being needed. Nice view in the late afternoon. Sun shining on the payload fairing. The second stage has separated the payload fairing around the Amos 17 spacecraft as we're now in the vacuum of space. Right now, Merlin vacuum engine continues to be on power. Trajectory looks good. Stage two is right in the middle of the predicted path. Avionics reports their systems are nominal. So coming up four minutes and 15 seconds, Mark, we are go on Falcon 9 carrying Amos 17 to the parking orbit, the first of two orbits for today. So just past the T plus five minute mark into today's mission for AMO 17. In case if you've just joined us, we had a slight delay due to weather over at uh, Florida launch site, but we did take off at 23 minutes after the hour. And as you can see on your screen, the stages have separated and there we have a beautiful shot of planet Earth as the second stage nozzle is glowing gorgeous red, orange, um, as it's carrying AMO-17 to geostationary transfer Earth. orbit. Stage two on nominal trajectory. We have confirmation that the trajectory for stage two is nominal.
just after the second stage ignited, you may have noticed a couple of pieces coming off from the nozzle. Um, if you've tuned into our launches before, you see that every time. Those are basically, bas that's basically just a stiffening ring that we place at the end of the nozzle to give it a little bit of structural integrity for transportation purposes while the rocket is still on the ground. Not really necessary uh, once the rocket has taken off and they fall away. The next major event that we are approaching at about the eight minute and nine second mark will be the first of two second engine cutoffs, or SECO-1. Uh, at this point in the mission, the second stage is pulling about three and a half Gs. You yourself may have experienced that. If you've ever been on a big roller coaster equivalent to that, the space shuttle encountered about three and a half Gs whenever it was taking off and re-entering. Terminal guidance. So we're less than 30 seconds away from second engine cutoff one. Like I said before, this is Amos 17, which will provide internet, phone, and secure communications to customers in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. We're sending it to Safety geostationary to transfer orbit. And we have confirmation that second engine cutoff has occurred and that we are in good orbit. So we're about to enter an 18 minute coast phase. So we're gonna take a break, but we'll leave you with an animation that shows where we are in the coast phase. We'll be back at the T plus 26 minute mark for a second Nominal stage relay. Orbit insertion.
25 minutes, 47 seconds since a great lift off of Falcon 9 from Cape Canaveral. We're getting ready to reignite the MVAC D engine you can see on your monitor. This is gonna be for our second and final burn. Currently we are chilling in the turbo pump. We're also firing settling thrusters, small nitrogen powered thrusters, making sure that the fuel and the liquid oxygen are at the bottom of the tank in the zero G environment. As you can see from the map, we're coming over equatorial Africa. This is the best place to do the burn to change the orbit. So burn's coming up, let's listen in. We've got good ignition, chamber pressure is on target. Now this burn is going to last about one minute. As you can see from the velocity counter, we're going to add about 2.6 kilometers per second. That's how much velocity we need to put into the orbit to get from the low Earth parking orbit we started from into the final geostationary transfer orbit required by the Spacecom customer. We're beginning to throttle down the second stage engine to keep G-loads on the spacecraft underneath the required levels. Getting ready for shutdown of the second stage engine. Back shutdown. We've got a good shutdown. Waiting for the orbit call out now. Nominal orbit insertion. And the guidance officer over the countdown net has called out a nominal orbit insertion. Looking at the plots, it's a really good looking orbit for the Falcon 9, still carrying the Amos 17 spacecraft on top. So now that we're in a good orbit, we're going to be coasting for the next four and a half minutes or so. So we're going to stop live commentary, but we'll be back at T plus 31 minutes, 30 seconds for the final event, the deployment of the Amos 17 satellite.
Two plus 30 minutes, 55 seconds since liftoff. Uh, we're back a little bit early. We've got a view here from the two cameras that SpaceX manufactures installs on the back end of the second stage, looking at the MVAC-D nozzle from both sides. Now currently we are halfway across Africa between Gabon and the heart of Beastock ground stations. That's where we're getting ready to get telemetry of payload deploy. That should be coming up in about 40 seconds from now. Now currently the second stage flight computer will send a command to the separation band that clamps Amos 17 to the Falcon 9. The band opens and small springs between the spacecraft and the second stage will open, gently pushing the satellite away from the second stage. Good view of the Amos 17 satellite from the camera atop the second stage. Waiting for payload separation event. AVI confirms spacecraft separation. Uh, always great to see the spacecraft floating away from the Falcon 9 second stage. So we've got a good deployment on time. We're in the desired orbit. And with that, we're going to bring our webcast to a close. But it's been a great webcast for the Falcon 9 team. We had a liftoff delayed 30 minutes by bad weather at the Cape, but just before we went on the air, the last of the weather rules went from red to green. The range was ready to support. We counted down and launched at 23 minutes after the hour. First stage did its job before separating. There is no recovery plan for the first stage today. It will re-enter and break up in the atmosphere. Second stage continued on with two great burns first into parking orbit and then into the final orbit. Expected losses. Just now on. we saw the separation of the Amos 17 spacecraft in the desired geostationary transfer orbit. So again, a great day for Falcon 9 and the Amos 17 customer. Thank you to our customer Spacecom and also to the 45th Space Wing for range safety and the FAA for licensing today's launch. We'd also like to thank all of our view viewers for tuning in. Follow our website and social media platforms for updates on the catch for the fairing halves as well as our next missions and milestones. Until next time, have a great night.